The next improvement approach we're going to talk about is called the process laboratory. In this, what we're doing is sort of a pilot demonstration test and small-scale experiment. Now, if we're talking about change recommendations, we have to test them. We can't just go on theory opinion and say, well, we think it's going to work this way, let's implement it. So there are two approaches for doing this. One is to conduct a small-scale pilot demonstration test, and that is where we make the proposed change and then test it, and then evaluate that process using the process performance measures to see did it make a difference. That's where we could use the two-sample t-test or the uh, individual's chart with stages. A second approach, though, is a little bit more innovative. It's called a process laboratory. And the purpose is to demonstrate that the change achieves the desired results and determine if the change has any unanticipated consequences. What we're going to do in a process laboratory is try to understand exactly what is happening. So the process laboratory is an actual experiment conducted to learn how the process, a process operates under controlled conditions. Controls or constraints may be applied to process equipment, materials, procedures, software, or the operator's skill set or competence. And the purpose of the experiment is to determine how the effect of the changes in various control states impact the quality, productivity, or capability of the operator to perform the assigned work. So if we take a look at this, the process laboratory is going to be monitored as an experiment. Because it's a human experiment, there's usually many different parameters that we want to understand. So we have a controlled setting where the routine work of an operator in the process is used to discover what are the behavior patterns in the people, the process, or the software that disrupt the efficiency flow of the daily work. So, for instance, we will use a real-world system. If we're testing, for instance, is there a difference in forms for creating operator orders, what we might do is test order takers with different types of forms, different types of structures, different types of orders, and then observe in their systems how many mouse clicks do they have, how many windows do they open, how many times do they have to go and make a phone call because they don't have information and data. And what we want to do is try to simulate or replicate the physical flows of the real world. And we want to be able to duplicate that working environment as closely as possible. That's why we call it a laboratory. The workers are working and observed unobtrusively. So we might have like a high resolution video or observers in a remote location who are taking notes and recording what's going on. And as these workers go through the routine conduct of the work, we characterize the type of work they're doing, this new format, and then the actual actions they have. And we analyze their activities. How much effort does it take to complete a task? What do we record in detail? So time in seconds, actions as minute as the mouse clicks, screens observed, menu depth they go to, keystrokes, etc. What information is missing from the forum that they have to do a follow-up with a phone call? And then how many different outside parties do they have to contact in order to be able to complete the tasks that they have? So all of this then can give us an idea of how good one alternative is to another in terms of the work that's being done. As you can probably think, doing a process laboratory is really a good approach towards understanding human tasks that are being performed in a process environment. So we're going to take a look at some other opportunities also for driving improvement.